Okay, so before we get into 4.2, I want to give a broad overview. We're going to talk in the next two sections about what we call biological macromolecules. So I think the biological part is easy to understand. These are molecules that occur in biological organisms, living things. Macro means large. So these are large biological molecules. So they're the four things that make up cells. We have all of these being organic molecules. Organic molecules are what make up cells. These are molecules that contain a carbon-carbon bond, right? Carbon and hydrogen as well. Uh, these large ones are called macromolecules. And most of them are something that we call polymers. So poly means many and mer means unit. So these are strings of many things stuck together. They're kind of like a chain of Lego bricks, right? Each Lego brick could be the same or slightly different, but when you chain them together, they get very long and connect to each other. So they're long polymers made up of smaller units called monomers. Um, those are the single units that we stick together to make a polymer. Mono means one, right? Mer means unit. Um, so the four major classes of macromolecules are lipids. These are our fats and oils. We'll talk about what they're used for. Uh, polysaccharides. Poly means many. Saccharides means sugar. These are sugars of some sort. But there's other things in here. These aren't just like edible sugars. Uh, things like plant cell walls are made of polysaccharides. Nucleic acids. My favorite of the macromolecules. Maybe you'll have a favorite at the end. Um, I'm weird. I know. Uh, DNA, RNA. These are genetic materials. Proteins are the fourth one. These include enzymes, uh, cellular receptors, structural components of the cells. Um, so we'll talk about each of these in turn. And we're going to start with lipids, and then we'll talk about sugars. So we're going to talk about uh, their role in kind of how, uh, how macromolecules get formed. Uh, so we'll talk about the structure here, polymers and things like that. And then we'll talk about lipids their function in the cell, and then sugars, and how we form what we call polysaccharides, which can get very, very large. So lipids are organic molecules um, that are very critical as structural components. So they form a part of our cell membrane and other parts of the cell. So you might be thinking of them mainly in a like fat role, right, where it's energy storage. But actually, you cannot survive without lipids because they are integral parts of the cell membrane. The, the bit that surrounds the cell is made up of these lipids. Um, they're great, though, as energy storage molecules because they have long chains with a lot of bonds. Remember I said these bonds are stored energy? Lipids have tons of bonds in here. Each one of these carbons has hydrogens bonded to it. Uh, so we have uh, fatty acids, triglycerides, phospholipids. These are critical making up the membrane of the cell. And you've probably heard these terms before, but maybe never understood what they meant. We have saturated fatty acids, right? Saturated fats. Uh, that means that every carbon in here has uh, two hydrogens attached to it. Um, whereas in uh, unsaturated fatty acids, not all of them are completely filled with hydrogen. They're not all saturated with hydrogen. They might have these what we call double bonds in here. And that's only important in that it can introduce a kink into the molecule. This kink changes the properties, can actually change how fluid your cells are, how you can uh, withstand different temperatures and things like that. So that's lipids. They're structural, but they're also energy storage. We also have carbohydrates. Uh, for animals, they tend to, in most cases, be energy storage and usage. But in plants, they have a huge structural role. So we have three different classes of what we call carbohydrates. We have monosaccharides. These are one sugar units. Um, things like glucose. Here's glucose, C6H12O6 here. Um, we have a different one called fructose, which has a slightly different chemical formula. The actual uh, 
number of atoms in here is the same, uh, but the, the arrangement of them is different. So they have different properties. You've probably heard of high fructose corn syrup uh, versus glucose, which is our standard sugar. Uh, we also have something called disaccharides. That's when we stick two of these units together. Something like lactose is a disaccharide. That Lactose is our milk sugar, right? Some of you may be lactose intolerant. Uh, you don't have the enzymes anymore after you were a baby. You tend to lose those, uh, particularly if you're not of Northern European ancestry. You lose the enzymes to degrade lactose and you might become lactose intolerant. That would be two units together. Um, so here we have a disaccharide. We have a glucose plus a glucose. You add them together, it forms a disaccharide. And um, the way these get attached determines their properties. We have polysaccharides. These are many chains of these together. We have things like starch, glycogen, cellulose, which is uh, the thing that makes up the plant cell wall. That's why plants are rigid. These all are, are um, polymers of glucose, but the way they get attached is different. And that matters because you have enzymes to break down starch, right? You can eat a potato and you have enzymes to break down that starch, which is technically made of the same units as cellulose, but it's attached slightly differently and you can't break down cellulose, right? So that's why when you eat a stalk of celery, you don't get a lot of energy from it. You get a lot of fiber, which comes out, right? Um, that's that cellulose not being degraded. So uh, there are other organisms that have enzymes like bacteria in cow's guts or the bacteria in termite guts that can break down cellulose. So these different bonds are really important uh, to their function and how we can process them. At its core, carbohydrates are energy sources for the cell and for metabolism. So those are the first two. We have organic compounds, right? Carbon-carbon bonds there. We have our large biological macromolecules. We have uh, talked about two of them so far, our lipids. Lipids are hydrophobic molecules, mainly carbon-carbon and carbon-hydrogen bonds. That makes them very good at storing energy. That's why fats and oils give us so much energy, but our bodies tend to store that energy in certain ways. If you don't exercise enough, uh, they will store that energy for a later date that may or may not come. We're going to talk about these ones in a moment, phospholipids. These are important parts that make up the cell membrane. Sugars are our short-term energy source. Um, we do have glycogen, which is a little bit longer term, but this is generally on the order of like less than a day. Um, sugars can form ring structures or have long chains. They have many different kind of shapes they can make that affect their properties. Okay, that's it for 4.2.